In the last episode of this series, we crashed and burned out of the playoffs in the first round. It was our first ever postseason appearance, and we blew it. Whether or not it is down to me resting starters or running uh, a bit too big of a bench, whatever, uh, whatever the reason, we uh, we fell to LeBron and the Lakers in what could be. LeBron's final ride. Now, if they beat San Antonio, now I suddenly don't feel as bad because they have swept their way past ourselves and San Antonio and had a 2 to nothing lead on Dallas, although that series is now tied and they blow it. So there you go, LA. You managed to win 10 games in a row before losing four straight to the Mavericks, who went on to the final only to lose to the New York Knicks who somehow ended up winning a championship as Donnie Sims was the MVP of the finals. So that ends a very wild ride for us in the playoffs, just the season in general. And that sets up an offseason where I'm not exactly sure what the hell is going to happen. Because money-wise, it's getting a little bit tight. And we have some contracts coming up that could prove to be a little bit damaging, especially in a series where we're not allowed free agent signings and we're not allowed to trade people for profit. I'm only allowed to say trade a player along with a second round pick for someone else's second round pick, essentially giving them up for free. It's going to be very interesting to see how this goes. LeBron ended up retiring, so thanks for the one last middle finger, LeBron. Appreciate it. It's Kevin Durant and Kevin Love both retire as a member of the uh, as members of the Warriors. So, there you go. Kevin Durant. Good old Kevin Durant. It's weird to see Isaiah Thomas retiring, but what are you going to do? So that ends it for that season. Hall of Fame inductees, there should be a couple. Just LeBron and uh, Kevin Durant. <laughs> Screw you, Kevin Love. No respect. Which is, you know, about right. There you go. LeBron and Kevin Durant. Jersey retirements, John Wall and Kevin Durant. LeBron? No LeBron. Did he not already have his numbers retired, like, before he retired? Durant gets his number retired by OKC. I don't think that would go over too well. League meetings, everything was rejected, and we're not going to do anything on that front. League realignment is fine. We go to the draft lottery, where for the first time, we have no reason whatsoever to worry about it. OKC ends up getting the number one pick, Golden State, down to three. Top three pick in the draft. Staff signing-wise, we have a couple of things that we have to worry about. So, number one, I want to view the candidates for a CFO, even though, eh, well, Malone's pretty much as good as it's going to get. Assistant GM, I mean, again, contracts were fine. Still good with Mike D'Antoni, so I guess assistant coach is what we're going to want to worry about. Brad Stevens, ooh. Ooh, he, does, he wants to be a head coach, of course, but ooh. I'm tempted. Uh, Matthew Jones, good offense, but not very well-rounded. And Melvin Hunt. Do we not have, like, a half-decent defensive assistant coach? Like Steve Spur? Steve Spur? Steve Kerr is there, and then I was going to say Eric Spolstra. The names just kind of ran together. Dirk. Do I bring back Dirk? I don't feel like I can. <laughs> I don't feel like I can. I mean, is there anybody, there's probably nobody that really fits, I mean, kind of like a system, like a balanced system is probably best for us, because no one's really going to fit the type of offense that we're running. So as far as what we're looking at here, let me just go all the way back up to the top, because damn it, we're already doing it. I mean, Dirk might be the best guy for the job, funny enough, although post-centric, uh, John Smith is terrible. Bob Weiss is... He looks like fucking... What's his face? From frickin' Christmas Vacation. <laughs> Chevy Chase <laughs> looks like... <laughs> if you were to tell me that's Chevy Chase's brother. Good old Chevy. What a guy. Oh, God. Or that dude from that one sitcom I don't watch. <laughs> like a mix of the two. Uh, hey, Conrad Oakley's not that bad, but he wants to be a head coach. Dion Blount is fairly well-rounded. Let's go for Dion Blount. 
Dion, buddy, let's come to an agreement. So I'm holding left trigger. I'm holding right. Aha! There we go. Okay, look at that. Left trigger does work. That was really weird. So hope that goes through. Uh, head scout. Head scout. Let's just look for the best available right now. Cuba Gooden Jr., James Graham, or Don Carter. Oh, Cuba. We've had a good run. Let's go for James Graham. Let's go for James Graham. Cuba, you found us some good players, but we'll let you move on to greener pastures. And Randy. Randy Martin. 99% jawline, but we'll still sign him up. Hopefully, we'll be good to go on that front. Uh, let's just advance a day. Uh, yes, I'll sign Randy and Graham. And Mr. Blount has signed as well. Good. That brings us to the Combine and the Pre-Draft Workouts. Uh, do not draft Maurice Lindsay. Gotcha. I think it was Lindsay. It might have been Lindsay. Pre-draft workouts. So, obviously, we're going to be just a little bit down there in terms of the draft order, which is fine. I'm just very nervous as to whether or not I should trade somebody right now. Particularly, not Darrell Arnold, not Bohannon, but, you know, Cameron Black. <clears throat> Seems like now might be the right time. He's making a lot of money. Dario's making a decent amount of money. Dorikas needs a new deal. Murray Hopkins needs a new deal. Now, now seems like it might be the right time to trade away some of these guys because salary-wise, I can be honest, I'm a little bit unsure as far as, you know, how safe we need to be, right? Obviously, I'm aware of the luxury tax, right? And we still have $55 million in space. That's going to disappear very quickly. Very quickly. I can't help but think that now would be the right time, even though Cameron Black's only 24. And it might be the wrong moves at the wrong time, but at least we have some half-decent players to replace him. And if we look at the attributes for Cameron Black... I mean, 88 potential, he's still, he's going to get better. But we know he's defense first. And I'm not going to say that particularly fits what we're doing here. I'm just worried about, I'm worried about the money. I'm worried about the money. I wouldn't be as concerned if Bohannon didn't need a new deal. I wouldn't be as concerned if A.J. Marsh, Dorikas, and Hopkins. I just, I can't help but think that $55 million is uh it's gonna go quickly so i think i'm gonna play it safe here whether or not this is the smart move or not i'm gonna try to trade cameron black right now and we're gonna see what we can do listed as three and a half star and i'm nearly tempted again with arnold we're fine shooting guard wise i mean nash and kato davidson they're still going to be important decent amount of depth someone like Jackie Nash and Richie Davidson are going to have that much more importance heading in the, you know, to the team heading into the next season. I think odds are, I mean, I'm going to try to hold on to Sean McKinney, and I think he might be our number one guy moving forward, although we'll try to bring back McDaniels as well. It's just a question for me right now whether or not I trade Dario as well, because I think A.J. Marsh is right to take over. He's only four overall points weaker. I think now's the right time to maybe move on from Dario, which I hate to say. But, like I said, I'm very concerned about the money situation. With the luxury uh, the luxury tax not, aren't between paying Arnold, Bohannon, and Dorikas a ton of money, I think focus on the big three is going to be enough. And then we try to hold on to the likes of Hopkins. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'm playing it too safe. I mean, obviously, I love Dario Golob. He was our first pick. He was our first ever pick. But in terms of who we have to replace him, A.J. Marsh should be a starter to continue to try and let him develop. And, I mean, if we look at his attributes right now, I mean, 93 potential. Yeah, it has to be A.J. Marsh's time here. I can keep Dorikas, maybe have Hopkins as well, bouncing back and forth between power forward and center. Or Dariq is bouncing back and forth. But I, I'm going to go with my gut on this one and think at the very least trading these two will be a good way to go. 
That's going to free up quite a bit of salary as well. I mean, $25 million for Cameron Black and over $18 million for Dario Golob. That's going to be the right way to go. And again, I'm going to have to pair them with a second-round pick this year. And it's just going to be trading them for whatever second-round pick uh, we can get or whatever the hell the team can afford it. So I think ideally, of course, not trading within our division would be nice. I know that there's a trade finder as well. You know, I actually think I'm going to try to go through the trade finder first and uh, just see who can, uh, you know, who can afford these two together. Although I'm guessing that the 76ers trying to move Embiid, that's, yeah, that's that's a pretty bad, nope, that's, that's not going to happen. Is there a deal here? That isn't a result of teams trying to move an ungodly amount of salary. That could, uh, you know, make it a little bit difficult. Cleveland might work. There's only $17 million worth of salary there to make that, you know, transaction go through. So I'm thinking right now, if you get what I'm saying here, Cleveland might be the best, uh, the best team. Detroit, Toronto are a little bit closer. San Jose Seals could work as well. I'm looking at San Jose... I'm nervous about making OKC better, but San Jose, Minnesota aren't uh, terrible options. Let's go talk to Cleveland, San Jose, and Minnesota and see if we can get this to work. So again, this might be overkill. I might technically be damaging my team too much, but at least with trading Dario, it makes sense. Cameron Black's the one where it's like, okay, we're probably overpaying for him anyway. So, Cleveland, if I were to say, take your second round pick, it's a valid trade, it would work. Again, I'm not allowed to get anything back for these two, it's just, if, uh, if I lose them, I lose them. Oh boy, you know, I think it's the way to go. So, salary cap room, if I remove that, it'd be 40, minus 42 million net salary, so obviously we'd be, uh, I think gaining a little bit. I mean, this might technically make it worse in terms of whatever we're on the hook for. This part of it, as far as remembering the whole cap structure of the NBA, it's a little bit weird for me. It's a little bit weird. Three bird years are required before a team can go over the salary cap to resign a player. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Oh, Dario. Dario, Dario. I'm going to go with my gut on this. This could end up being an absolutely horrific mistake. And it sucks that we have to trade two decent players, but I'm going with my gut on this. Will that go through? Yes, it will. So Dario Golob and Cameron Black have been dealt just to get us a little bit of cap alleviation. Whether or not that was the right choice, time will tell. Now, as far as what we are dealing with in the drafts, obviously the players at the top of the board don't really affect us. But pretty much at about, say, 15 is when we want to start being concerned. So we'll take a look at Gus Davis. Uh, Lamont Boone would be all right. Ellis Pierce. Perkins, I'm not really going to have to worry about too much. Even though, I mean, yeah, we have a shooting, or not a shooting forward, a small forward for the future. Cunningham, Ruben Winston we'll take a look at. Uh, Moody, not really, don't really have to look at him necessarily. Although he might end, eh, I mean 100% actually, what am I talking about? I need to pay attention to who's actually at 100% already, my bad. I'm second guessing most of what I'm doing and I'm trying not necessarily, you know, to not necessarily pan you know, make panic moves over what's gone down. It's just definitely me second guessing uh, whether or not I just made the right call. But that move is done, of course. Kobe Guerrero, we'll take a look at Jim Brewer, Wallace Keefe, which is a great name. Uh, we'll avoid that dude and that dude. A lot of centers. Willie Blount is there. Jesse Wall, Cesar Guzman. And that is it. Let's do it. So to the draft we go. And we'll see what we're dealing with here. Number one pick to OKC. Not the first time, of course, they've gotten a number one pick. They take Norman Reese, the Englishman. He's, <laughs> he's rocking the David Vujanic look there. Uh, we will sim to our pick, which is 31st because of all of the goddamn players in this league. And we'll start off by looking at Draft Express. And Javon Perkins 
21 years old. He was 18th on Draft Express. 21 years old. 65 overall. But I guess sealing his Metal World piece. Good old Ron Artest. I guess the argument here is what the hell is his potential? Is he worth trying to develop? 89! He could be worth trying to develop at 21 years old. There's also Adrian Bosch, though, who's a year younger. A lot further ahead. What is his potential? 75! Ugh. We'd have to waste a couple of off-seasons worth of untapped potential on him. I don't think that's worth it. Uh, let's see, Willard Torres. 68 overall, 19 years old. What is your potential, buddy? Out of Oregon State, 77. That kind of hurts. Let's, uh, let's look over this way, shall we? So top potentials right now are Perkins and Alan Richards. Right. So Richards is 23 at a 64. Derek Westfall is a 64 at 21, which really isn't great unless he has a good potential, which, I mean, it's an 82. So even, that means even someone like Jim Brewer, it's going to be worse. It doesn't look like a very good draft for us at this point. 82. I mean, ideally, we'd take a point guard just to have a natural point guard for a, you know, a secondary position behind Arnold, which is the one thing that we're technically lacking. It's just whether or not anyone's half decent. I mean, someone like Perkins. I mean, Alan Richards, again, it's just that potential. I mean, it's an 86, but he's 23 years old. So it's kind of rough. Jim Brewer. Perkins is more of a defender anyway, so he'd basically be a worse Cameron Black replacement. And the highest overall is Bosch. That is a rough situation to be in because I don't really trust. Attribute-wise, potential is not there. we got to go back over to aggregates. This is not a good situation here. Now, obviously, it's towards the end of a first round with the highly expanded league, and I think that's what you know, a lot of people have to remember. Like, okay, we added in a shitload of expansion teams, so obviously by the end of the first round and into the second round, there's not going to be much talent left that isn't going to be you know, the type of player that you really have to aim to develop. Um, if I look at point guards outright, though, how many are left in this draft? The answer is quite a few. In terms of who we have scouted, though, there's only three that we have complete info on. Willard Torres. Again, 19 is a 77. We could at least craft him into a half-decent role player. Like, he doesn't have to be this amazing starter. I gotta be honest, I'm thinking Willard Torres is the guy. I mean, he's 28th on Draft Express, so it's not exactly a stretch. I'm gonna take Willard Torres. I mean, in terms of him being a player behind Arnold, you know, I think we're gonna be looking all right. I hope this probably uh, spells the end of someone like Cato's time on the team. But, of course, we know that Davidson, Cato, and Nash are all a little bit more suited towards being a forward as opposed to a point guard. So I'm gonna take Willard Torres. I want to see what they say about him. You look at the Sonics roster from a team need perspective. Yep, that's exactly what we needed, of course. Here's a point guard to the second round, which, of course, will technically have been Cleveland's pick, not our own. So we'll see. It is uh, 67th, I think it was, something like that. So in terms of scouting, we only have three players scouted at 100%. The youngest of them is Ethan Baker at forward, 19-year-old out of Pitt. 75. It's not too bad. He's pretty far down there, but again, we don't know anything about Cameron Kane, uh, Jack McCoy, Greg Babcock. We know pretty much nothing about these guys. So I'd rather go with someone who's a bit more, you know, of a 100% guarantee here. Tian Chung, or Tia, Tian Chung Yi, who I think we looked at before. Of course, we're not going to know his potential, though. So I'm going to play it safe. We're going to take Ethan Baker, who will spend some time in the uh, the good old G League, but yeah, we'll bring on Baker, and that's that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Again, uh, judging by where we were going to be drafting, that's about what we were looking at anyway, in terms of those type of players. So I'm okay with it. Uh, Norman Reese was a 79. From there, it kind of dropped off a little bit. You got a couple of other guys who are you know up there. They're already half decent players. In terms of like true superstars out of the draft, it's been a little bit of a rarity, but I'm okay with that. 
I'm all right with that. The rookie signing, Torres and Baker, welcome aboard. So Capram are going to be 45 million in the hole right now. Yikes! But still, we'll sign both of those two. Brings us to our team options, which I mean, obviously, Bohannon, Dorikis, and AJ Marsh. We're picking that up. I'm even going to pick it up for Jackie Nash, uh, just for now. Uh, we'll see whether or not he ends up sticking around. We'll pick up those options though. So we know that we're good to go on that front. That brings us to qualifying offers. So Wesley, and Hopkins, McKinney, Cato, Chris Hunt will be the only guy that we do not extend the qualifying offer to. That brings us to the start of free agency where again, I don't think we're at risk of losing anybody now. So that's very nice. So point guards, of course, we have Arnold and Torres. Shooting guard, it's Bohannon, Davidson, Nash. No Cato. So I'm going to go double check on Cato. Forwards, uh, McDaniels, Sparks, and McKinney. Right. Right. That's only a little bit concerning, right? Even though I think they were mostly qualifying offers. Going to double check on Wesley. And got to double check on Murray Hopkins just to make sure that we're good to go. Because I can't help but panic. <laughs> Cannot help it. So, I mean, in terms of, you know, three offers a day, I mean, the one, I don't even know who the hell I'm most concerned about, i got to be honest with you. Got to be honest with you, it's definitely not Kato. I mean, I think, you know, McKinney would really be the one that I'm most concerned about, but again, yeah, he should be fine. And there's McDaniels, Sparks. Edmund Sparks can probably be let go, I think, just based off of our depth. He's a 73 at this point. I'm good with letting Sparks walk as well. I believe he was also in that first year draft for us. He was. But, uh, yeah, I think we're good to let him go as well. As long as we can keep McDaniels and uh, McKinney. So, Sparks, see you later, buddy. It was, uh, it was nice knowing you. But Jesse McDaniels, we definitely need to look to bring back. That's looking like a little bit of a rough contract, but again, we do have the option to uh, move on from him. I mean, McDaniels is the, uh, or not McDaniels, McKinney is the main guy to be concerned about here. And uh, we should be fine on that front. Yeah, technically he's an RFA, he's a 75, at 23 years old. He had good potential as well, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure I double checked this earlier. 77. Oof. Oof. Maybe not. Maybe not. We don't exactly have that built in replacement. So, I mean, McKinney, we're going to be able to match that offer. So, that's fine. Uh, so, we'll go back over. And we definitely need to re sign McDaniels. So, I'm just going to give him the offer that he wants. Since we can afford it, we should be fine there. So, I think we're good on that front. I'm still wondering about Sparks and Kato. Just, uh, just a little bit. Let's go down to power forwards. We're looking for Wesley, who's an RFA, so we'll be able to match whatever offer. Hopkins, of course, also an RFA. So it's just really down to uh, Sparks and Kato. If I'm looking here, I mean, technically we'd be down to three shooting guards and three forwards, which we should be fine, I would think. That'd be 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 players. Yeah, we should be fine. I would think we'd have a little bit of depth in case of injury. We could sign some randos. Or, I mean, we could bring these guys in, too, just to have that depth be a little bit better. Uh, it would be a minimum salary for Sparks. I'm going to bring him in. He might not even play. But for a minimum salary, it makes sense to bring him back. And then Kato as well, is an RFA. So we'll be able to match whatever offer he gets. Beautiful. So this roster is pretty much the same. Again, whether or not I had to shed that much cap, that's the real question, right? That's the real question. Maybe I didn't have to shed it that soon, but it was an eventually, you know, it was going to happen eventually. So McDaniels and Sparks will keep. Hopkins will be on a cap hold. Uh, McKinney's obviously going to be on a cap hold. And Sparks, McDaniels are fine. Wesley's on a cap hold. Cato. Hunt, we will renounce his rights. So we should be good for the most part. I don't know. Now I'm uh, 
Now I'm second guessing myself whether or not I needed to shed that much space. But McDaniels, of course, will agree to a deal. Sparks will agree to a deal. We're going to match the option for Murray Hopkins, obviously. We're going to keep McKinney. I'm just going to double check this. So McDaniels were agreeing. Sparks were agreeing. Hopkins were matching. McKinney were holding. And Wesley were holding. Kato were holding. And Hunt were renouncing rights. Perfect. So I don't really plan on letting anybody go. And then day three, we're still good. So again, agree, agree, match. Cap hold for McKinney. Cap hold for Wesley and Kato. There we go. Not too bad. Let's advance forward yet again. And still no offers for these three. I might as well send an offer now, right? I mean, unless, like, McKinney was the one who didn't even want to negotiate. But, I mean, come on, buddy. You're, you're staying. Like, that's not changing. You are staying here. Uh, we're going to RFA's McKinney. I mean, you're going to stay. You have no choice. Like, you really don't. Uh, and then again, Cato and Wesley. Julio, you wanting to, uh, you wanting to negotiate, buddy? Yes, you are. Wow, that's a drastic overpayment. However, I can afford it for now, and, uh, I think I'll just send it out, get rid of him when we need to, and then Wesley, where you at, buddy? Where you at? Wesley's a power forward. <laughs> That's the issue. There you are, Byron. You're not that good, but I still want you. So let's move forward. Cicado and Wesley have agreed. McKinney is, of course, still going to hold out. We'll be able to bring him back, though. McKinney, buddy, you're the last one. Obviously, you're going to have a bit better of a role. McKinney, you are not going to the Aces. I am matching that. You are stuck here. So our roster is looking relatively good to go. Again, it's just the question over whether or not that was a wise move but technically technically we're looking okay in terms of salary cap room and everything my concern is of course Bohannon's deal is going to be going up and then what happens when Dorikas's deal goes up so let me know. I mean, that's going to be the controversial moment of the episode. Whether or not I may have just potentially screwed us out of something due to uh, maybe jumping the gun and playing it a little bit too safe with the money. But it's uh, at the very least, Cameron Black really didn't fit our system. He was, you know, he is a defense first option, and there's no doubt that we needed AJ Marsh to take over for Dario as the starting power forward. Darrell Arnold's up to a 91 overall. Bohannon's a 92. Jackie Nash is up to a 74. Uh, Kato, a 73. Davidson held at a 72. That season-ending injury didn't help him. McDaniels is a 79. McKinney's a 76. Sparks still at a 73. Baker is terrible. Uh, he'll be in the G League. Marsh is up to an 80, so I think we had to. Like, Dario would have been fairly expensive, just, you know, not even being the starter. Wesley is 72, Dorikas down to an 88, and Hopkins at an 80. I don't know, man. Time will tell whether or not that was the right choice. I think you can tell. I already have my doubts over whether or not I made the right choice, but I felt like playing it safe. And play it safe I did by shedding some of that extra salary. And now, obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a new thing for me-ish. In terms of understanding, like, okay, you know, I, I get, like, obviously, like, okay, here's your normal salary cap, I understand what the luxury taxes and everything. It's just, okay, how, how much money are these guys going to be getting at this point in time? So, as far as the roster is concerned, Arnold is A-plus potential, so he's good. Torres is a B-minus. We could look to bump that up. Cato's a B-minus. Cato's still only 22 years old because we got him out of high school. Davidson at a B plus, Jackie Nash at a B. That's not too bad. McDaniel's at a B plus, McKinney at a B minus. AJ Marsh is already an A plus. You have Wesley at a B minus, Dorikas at an A. So I'm just trying to decide who is uh, worth putting time into. I think Willard Torres and Baker are going to be the two G League options for us this year. Which means point guard wise, it's going to be Arnold, Bohannon, and Davidson leading the way on that front, with uh, you know Cato and Nash being more shooting guard, shooting forward, or small forward, I should say. But still, 
So I don't know if I want to... I kind of want to invest some time into Torres. Cato's never going to be a starter for us. It's just... Who out of the depth players do I make better? Do I try to focus a little bit of time and effort into McKinney? Is Baker's only a C+. Plus. But do I try to focus a little bit of effort into McKinney? Or maybe try to get McDaniels up to an A-? minus, Or is 26 a bit too late to see decent improvement for him? Which it probably is. I'm thinking maybe McKinney... Davidson. I'm just wondering about Baker. Maybe McKinney, Davidson, and Torres? And then, of course, in the future, we aim to have Davidson be the second guard behind Bohannon and Torres be the main point guard option. I think that's what I'm going to do. Torres, Davidson, and McKinney. If I have three options, which I should, and I do... Not sure if this is the right call, but we're about to find out. So, Torres, congratulations. You're up to a B. Shooting guard wise, we're going to go for Davidson, who is up to an A minus, which is beautiful. And uh, McKinney, we're going to invest some effort into you. That gets him up to a B, and we're done, and we're off. To the start of the next season, again, we'll probably look to optimize the roster as much as we can, and hopefully it looks decent. I mean, from what I was seeing right there, it still looks half decent, maybe not as good as it could have been. Uh, if we go to quick edit as well, so again, with Arnold, with Arnold, uh, same thing, point guard first, shooting guard second, that's staying the same. Uh, with Willard Torres, and you know what, in fairness, I mean, I know I'm already sending Torres down to the G League, that's fine. We're going to send Baker down as well, although I need to sign somebody. So I think, I think, I think, and in fairness, it's not going to be a point guard because then it won't run these guys, I think, I think, I think. So it'll probably be just like a, a nonsense power forward or whoever the hell is like the lowest. Yeah, so we'll actually be bringing back Chris Hunt. That works for me. And that way we should be able to send, uh, should be able to send that dude down. Oh boy, the menus, there we go. So, uh, Mr. Baker to the G League, you go. So we won't necessarily worry about those two, but again, we know where Arnold is uh, good to go in terms of position type, point guard, shooting guard. Bohannon, it's gonna be the same thing, shooting guard, point guard, Jackie Nash, it's a bit of a tough call, so 70 overall there, 74 there, 74 there, yeah, so Nash is going to be the same thing, Kato, 69, 73, 72, same thing there in terms of optimizing him, Davidson is a 70 rated point guard, 72 there, 73 as a forward, Ah, uh, it's a little bit tough. It's a little bit tough where he's technically better as a forward, but I think in terms of point guards, he's a little bit higher rated. And I think that'll get him a little bit more playing time being, you know, having point guard as an option. I think the issue here, though, is Nash also set up. So Nash is a 70, Kato's a little bit weaker. Kato's only a 72 there, whereas Nash is still a 74. I'm thinking maybe having Kato be set up as a point guard as well, but for now I guess that's fine. And in fairness, I mean, we don't really have any new additions that we need to full-on optimize from where we were, so I think with the team, let's take a look at ye old game plan and say that we want to run a 10-man. Would we have somebody playing? So Davidson right now would technically be out. As would Jackie Nash, which is a little bit surprising. Just a bit. But it would be Dorikas, Marsh, McDaniels, and then obviously Arnold and Mohannon, which isn't too bad. Hopkins would be the sixth man. McKinney would be getting plenty of playtime. Sparks might be getting a little bit more playtime than he really needs. So, I mean, in terms of big men, I mean, yeah, having Hopkins get the majority of the time, having Wesley get a little bit of time is definitely the way to go. Uh, McKinney is set up as a secondary power forward where Sparks is a backup shooting guard. 
So, in fairness, we could run McKinney at power forward, slightly undersized. Sparks as a forward and guard. I think, obviously, I'd want to get... Uh, Want to get Nash and Davidson with that little bit of extra time. So I think I would go 10 minutes for Nash. And drop Sparks' time. Give that to Davidson. I think for the most part we'd pretty much be good to go. I don't even know if we necessarily uh, need 10. We might just be able to roll with 9. But I think that would be a potential way. Having Hopkins be the sixth man might not be ideal, admittedly. But it could work. I mean, McKinney's still getting a, a decent amount of playtime. And obviously this is uh, this is interchangeable. I'd like to see Cato and Sparks play a little bit more. I mean, especially Cato being a little bit younger. Only option there is to take out Wesley and just have Hopkins and McKinney be the replacements, which honestly works. I mean, Wesley is 26 now, and Sparks is 31. So we could, we could give those eight minutes to Cato, which might not be that bad, and front court would still be getting uh, plenty of play time. Again, couple of different options we have with this team moving forward. It's just whether or not that was the right call. But again, we still have Darrell Arnold. We still have Bohannon. I mean, McDaniels isn't exactly a slouch. I mean, he's not the ideal player to have, you know, starting forward, but still that works. I mean, Marsh isn't exactly, you know, as far as the forward combo between McDaniels and Marsh, it's not ideal, but at least Marsh has a ton of potential. And then Dorikas as well going down a point is a little bit concerning. But looking at system proficiency, I mean, Dorikas doesn't exactly fit, but McDaniels and Marsh do arguably fit better then Dario and Cameron Black did. And of course, Bohannon and Arnold thrive in the system, which is all that matters. So, I think we'll leave it at that. I am intrigued, though, actually, at how highly rated we are. So I hit play game here against San Antonio. I mean, seeing how we match up against the Spurs, I mean, it's pretty damn good. And I can't imagine that their roster changed too much compared to last year. I mean, they have one true superstar on that team with A.C. Galloway. That's it. So, I I don't know. Where are we in, like, the preseason, you know, preseason uh, power rankings? We're listed as number one. Whether or not that's accurate or not, I don't know. 2K Sports has us uh, 31st. Mark Spears has us number one. NBA.com has us number one. So, I mean... You know, and again, we weren't slouches. We won 52 games last year. I don't think the changes we made to the roster will absolutely cripple what this team is capable of doing. I guess it's just a matter of and me more so just wanting your input. You know, what we do with this roster, your input as far as who should be getting these minutes, whether or not we roll uh, with a 9 or a 10 man, and who we kind of focus on because I'm not against the likes of Jackie Nash getting playing time. Davidson obviously needs playing time. We're going to be going a little bit younger, and even then I don't even think we necessarily have to work uh, you know, on getting Cato, Sparks, and Wesley minutes. But Cato, of course, is 22, so it's like, hey, eh, he could benefit from a little bit of time, but 75 potential. So it might not even be the worst thing in the world to roll with an even smaller bench and take away Sparks minutes, give those to Davidson, take away Cato's minutes, give those to Jack and Nash. It was a great name, and run with that at the start of the year with Wesley Sparks and Cato just kind of being a little bit of depth. It's not a terrible setup. I mean, we could take minutes away from Hopkins and, I mean, you know, give them to Marsh, give them to McDaniels. It's not a bad way to go at all, in my opinion, just to really give our starters, you know, all the time in the world to try and be... As successful as they can be, really. I mean, I guess it really does depend, too, on how much time we want Sean McKinney to have, even though he's not quite ready to go. But let me know what you think, as far as the rotation is concerned to start the year. Did I make a major mistake freeing up a little bit of cap space, maybe a tad bit early than we had to? And let me know what you think in terms of how we will do this season. 
And if we don't make the playoffs, then I guess I truly know that I greatly screwed up.